Hey guys, welcome back to Rooted Homeschool. I am so glad you're here. If you're new here, I'm Christina and I'm a homeschooling mom of five kids, ages one, two, five, 10, and 13. In today's video, I'm sharing with you one that has been highly requested, and that is a flip through and overview of the high school language arts level one from The Good and the Beautiful. Okay, so this is everything from High School One from The Good and the Beautiful, and I'm gonna walk you through everything starting at the very beginning. So right here, we have units one, two, and three. So if you missed my ninth grade curriculum choices video, I explained in that video that the high school language arts courses from the good and the beautiful are broken up by 10 different units, unlike the younger levels, which is one large course book with the supplementary materials. So they are estimated to take about a month each for 10 months of school, depending if you do a four or five day school week. So these, I have these separated out by the books that go with them. So for units one, two, and three, you read the book, Just David by Eleanor H. Porter. For units four and five, you read Into the Unknown. For units six, seven, and eight, this little set is interesting because in unit six, you start up from slavery, you read more of it in unit seven, and then you finish it up in unit eight. And then in unit seven, you add in some of um, the story of John Greenleaf Whittier, and then you finish that one in unit eight as well. So both of these books you finish up together in unit eight. And then in units nine and 10, you read Patterns on the Wall by Elizabeth Yates. This grade tracker for high school language arts, I printed out from the Good and the Beautiful website. This is the one thing on the table that did not come shipped to me in a hard copy. So that's totally optional. Here are the geography and grammar and poetry memorization cards. You use these throughout all three years of the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts. So this first set, I'll show you really quickly. Um, these are the poetry memorization cards and you have the poems themselves on one side. And then on the other side, this is kind of like a fill in the blank. This helps you memorize by giving you some of the words and then having your brain fill in the ones um, that are missing. And so these are all of the poetry ones. This little sheet here, which obviously it's perforated so it needs to be separated, but this is all of the Greek and Latin root words. Um, years one, two, and three and then it does include year four, which the Good and the Beautiful is not coming out with. They're supposed to be coming out with some um, half year courses, but they have not released them yet. So that one I would just put aside at that point. These are all of the geography cards and these are pretty extensive. So you have major rivers, major mountain chains, major deserts, and then you have all of the different continents. And then just to show you an example of what these look like is you have explanations of them. You have them on the map. And just to show you the idea is that you are supposed to memorize these. So those are the geography cards. So geography, poetry, and Greek and Latin root word cards. The next thing that you have is the grammar and writing guide. And again, this you will use all three years of the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts. And this is very extensive. Um, it would take me a long time to get through this whole book, but I, I will just kind of give you 
um, at least a partial flip through and overview. Um, in the table of contents, you'll see that it covers grammar, punctuation, and usage. Um, there are terms to know, parts of speech, sentence types, literary terms, editing marks, sentence diagramming. This goes over the different parts of speech, different punctuation, types of clauses, types of sentences. Here you have commonly confused words. Then this is the writing section. So things about plagiarism, summarizing, descriptive language, word and, and redundancy, citation, essay writing, journaling, using language, so language use. Then here you have the terms and the parts of speech. So that continues, and then you have sentence types. You have literary terms in alphabetical order. You have editing marks, sentence diagramming. And I'll just kind of flip through like in chunks just to give you an idea of what the inside looks like. It is very extensive. It also does have like these nice little illustrations. So it's nice to look at. It does also um, give you links to videos that you can go watch for more explanations of some of these concepts. That's the grammar and writing guide. So I just want to show you a little bit more about how these units look inside. So starting with unit one, I won't go through all of them because it would just be like probably over an hour for me to do that. Um, but I just want to show you how the units are set up. So this is unit one. And because it's the first unit in the first level of high school, it does also give you course instructions. So the other ones don't have course instructions, just this one. So it tells you the items that you will need. So it talks about the booklets, the required clean classics, access to the course videos, the grammar and writing guide, which I showed you, and the geography and poetry cards, which I showed you the art supplies that you'll need for the art projects. And then these are the course instructions. So it tells you even what to do on the first day to watch that video and then how to go through the units. So this tells you the regular path to finish in one school year um, and decide if you're doing a four or five day school week. To be honest, this may vary for us depending on the week. So then it says to print and fill out the year at a glance schedule. And so I have not done that yet, but I will do that. It says to use a weekly planner and then set the amount of time you'll work each day or week. Um, it says to do that for your first unit. It talks about what to do if you're a slower reader or a quicker reader. And then it explains to you the honors path. And so right now we have tentatively decided that he will do that by including one of the honors book studies and he chose the screw tape letters, which we did not order yet. And this is the course reading challenge. It says in addition to reading books integrated with the course to read books for the course reading challenge found at thegoodandthebeautiful.com high school one, it pushes you to read books of the highest moral and literary merit. So this is going to just tell you how many hours you should be spending doing that. It goes over how to use the high school geography and poetry cards. It goes over how to do the spelling dictation. It tells you about the unit checks, about the creative writing. It talks about how it covers minimal fiction, personal narrative and poetry writing and that students especially interested in fiction writing should take the course titled High School Creative Writing, which that has not released yet. 
It also explains that the art and his the art and geography are designed to not need supplementation. So one art project is included for each unit for a total of 10. And if they want more than basic art skills, then they'll want to supplement with extra art courses. Each unit has a grading sheet so that when they turn in everything, you can grade it all on one sheet right in the booklet. And it also tells them what else needs to be turned in with the unit. This is where they do the spelling dictation and then they can optionally watch the video about how to complete spelling dictation. And then it gets into the rest of the unit. So these are the things that they need to memorize and because it's the first unit, it asks them to watch the how to practice memorization video tells them to focus on the year one Greek and Latin roots and how long to spend on that and how many days and the same for poetry and memorization. And then for geography, it tells them to study New England and to practice until mastered. Then it tells them what they will be focusing on in language, arts, and literature. And so they'll read this and it actually, I like how it includes these check boxes so they can check things off as they finish them. And so this is kind of interesting because this is by Jenny Phillips and it kind of talks them through why we study language, art, geography, and art. And then this is an intro to the first book that they'll read, Just David, which they read over the first three units. It's broken up over the first three units. And I like how it gives the background to the author um, and some quotes by her as well. Then it goes through the definitions and vocabulary words that they will find in this book, which I think is really great that it covers them ahead of time. Another video for them to watch. Here they will write the definitions. They will write the words in context. And then this assigns them their reading. So they, you'll decide together with them how many hours or more they'll spend on the course reading challenge, which is the other books that are not part of these units. And then it tells them that they'll read chapters one through eight of Just David during this unit. And then to answer the digging deeper questions. Then they get into some writing practice. So it directs them to the grammar and writing guide some practice with those concepts, grammar usage and punctuation. Here they're working on parts of speech. Here they get into more language arts and literature. So here they will learn about Emerson and his poetry. This is where they'll read the poetry. There's a video for them to watch. And then they also learn some how to annotate and summarize in this unit. So then they'll annotate and summarize this passage. Then they'll do some editing practice and then some geography about New England because this is where um, both Porter and Emerson lived. So they'll work on the geography for New England. They will trace the map. They'll learn about forest biomes. They'll read a poem about trees by another author. And then they will do this photograph study. So it explains to them how to do it. And then there are these beautiful color photographs of trees in New England. So it really gives them a visual to go along with the geography and the authors and all of that stuff. And then this is their first insights journal and it explains how to do that in their grammar and writing guide. 
Then it gives them options. So I like that it gives them a little bit of choice and it also gives them a rubric. So they know how they'll be graded and you know how to grade them for it. And there's also um, a video for us as moms to look up how to grade. So it gives you some insight into that. Then there is some spelling practice. And then each unit ends with some review, which I think is really great. Then this is the optional art project that is at the end of each of the units. And then this is what an entire unit looks like. So I'm not gonna go through all of the units unless there are enough requests for that. So if you are really interested in seeing a flip through of the rest of the units, definitely let me know in the comments below. And what I would probably do is just put out the videos one unit at a time. And I would probably do that throughout the school year as my son is doing them or as he's getting ready to do them. Um, so they would probably go up throughout the course of the year if people are interested in that. If not, then I won't bother um, because I do think that that first unit gives you an idea of how they're set up and all the different elements included. But I know that I would probably watch those videos. So if you are interested in that, definitely let me know. I would possibly do um, units two and three over the summer. Um, and maybe get a little bit ahead of the game, but just let me know if that's something you're interested in and then I can decide and let you guys know how I would put those videos out for you. And if you have a suggestion or a request for how I put those out, definitely let me know that as well. So that is the overview for the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts. As I mentioned, there is a lot there. It covers a lot. Is it a? It is a really, comprehensive language arts program and so I may in the future do more in-depth videos of the units themselves if that's something you guys are interested in but for the sake of not having like an hour-long video I wanted to give you as much of a flip through and overview as possible while still not overwhelming you with too much information and too long of a video. If you have used the high school language arts level one i would love to hear from you in the comments down below let me know if you have insight into any of the planning anything at all that you think would be helpful to us as we embark on this high school homeschool journey very soon if you are new here please introduce yourself in the comments below i love to get to know you guys if you are not already following me over on instagram you can follow us for more day-to-day -day updates at rooted underscore homeschool. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It just helps out my little channel and also lets me know what content you guys are enjoying most. If you are not already subscribed, I would love for you to stick around. I have plenty more curriculum, homeschool, day in the lives, big family life, some meals, and more coming your way very soon. So if any of that interests you, subscribe, click the notifications bell so that you know when a new video is coming out. I hope to see you in future videos and until next time, stay rooted.